We would like to start our press conference of uh, the Prime and the Backup Crews, Expedition 3031. And prior to that, I would like to let you know about the results uh, of the Commission. The Commission confirmed the uh, both crews. The Prime crew consists of uh, the commander of the transport vehicle Soyuz and of the commander of Expedition 31, Oleg Kononenko. Flight engineer, ISS, and uh, the Soyuz vehicle from the European Space Agency, Andrei Kuipers. And uh, flight engineer two of the transport vehicle Soyuz and of the ISS, uh, Donald Pettit. The backup crew is a, a flight engineer of uh, the transport vehicle Soyuz and of the SS Senator Williams, Akihiko Shukshide, who is also a flight engineer, and Yuri Malenchko, commander. Also, uh, Sergei Krikalov, the director of the training center, second part in our press conference, and I would like to welcome you to ask questions. Congratulations on the successful uh, examination session. And the first uh, question that we have is regarding your call sign. We would like to learn how you chose it. And uh, the second question is uh, what uh, weightlessness indicator you're going to have, what toy you have, and what else you would like to take with you on board. Altaris is our call sign. Oh, would like to try the other microphone. Antares is our call sign. And you can read this in the encyclopedia. This is a very bright star in the Scorpion constellation. Normally, Cosmos uh, choose uh, call signs uh, among names of different stars or constellations, and they just follow this tradition. As regarding our weightlessness indicator, I don't know. Uh, my children are already old enough, eight years old, so I didn't ask them. There are many other ways to get a toy. As regards the personal items, it's again all very traditional photos, some souvenirs, stuff like this. Um. I have several items, they come from different people. I have photos of my family with me. And the main talisman for me is my crew. My mementos, the talisman, are all electronic, which uh, so electronic images and things of family and friends. And I think this is important. This is a fitting for the space age to have electronic talisman. Uh, a question for Oleg. Everybody knows that this is your second flight. Were are there any reiterations, uh, duplications in your training? Well, each training is always different because uh, I have a new position on my crew. I have uh, new members, new crew members, new friends. So each training is uh, separate and individual. It's uh, really difficult to compare it to previous training. Some things can be compared, but most cannot. Well, it's just that you uh, tried to get into your service last time, yesterday, and uh, during a previous training, during the uh, uh, previous, you did the same on the same day. No, it was actually on April 8th. So I think uh, that's really 
repetition is a mother of knowledge. That's the problem that we have. I can only put it like this. Uh, it's uh, his uh, first time flying to space a second time. And I believe that everybody will agree that who have flown that the second flight is really different from the first one. Maybe the third or the fourth would be closer to the previous flights, one and two. But the second is really different. It's a really new experience, and uh, you have already flown. Uh, you judge by your experience, whereas when you fly for the first time, you take whatever has been told to you by your uh, by those who are more experienced than you. So, what I can say is that uh, when you flow a second time, when everybody treats you as an experienced cosmonaut, it's really different. It's probably even more difficult to perform the tasks because you're already treated as an experienced crew member, but I think Yuri will agree and confirm. I think the second flight is different from the first one by a greater load of responsibility. And that's why you have this responsibility, because you've uh, flown for a second time. So even though this uh, vehicle is a new one, it's only uh, the third flight of uh, the vehicle of the new series, but still we trust their confidence, we trust their knowledge, we trust their experience. Thank you. Ekaterina Beloglasa from Osiski Cosmos, I would like to congratulate you on the beginning of your work once again. We looked at your program, it's very interesting. There will be different cargo vehicles approaching the ISS, the European one, the US one, the Japanese one. And uh, could you say a few words about your scientific work up there, or about your extravehicular activity, your spacewalk, uh, the work with the manipulators, all that kind of stuff? Well, originally, I think about nine cargo vehicles were planned for our expedition. Then uh, the flight program was modified, so it's a bit fewer now. We have uh, ATV, we have the progress vehicle. So for the Russian side, we use the traditional Russian uh, modes of docking. As regards the West segment, we expect new cargo vehicles to come. Uh, SpaceX and uh, Dragon. And uh, this document will also be done the traditional way, that is by the U.S. manipulator, the SS RMS, the Japanese cargo vehicle, the HTV, or oh, will not probably see it, pro the current flight program, and regarding the Russian spacewalk, all Russian EVAs, that's what they're called, they are really difficult in the technical aspect. What we'll be tasked with uh, will be supposed to move the cargo boom strela from one uh, point to MRM2. And this will probably take a long time. It's a really complex task. Then we're also supposed to perform some work with the panels. And if we still have time, we'll have two additional scientific experiments. This is the Noslevost and test. And also adding some additional installations so that we can egress the docking compartment easier. Uh, what about the launch of uh, a certain device? Yes, uh, Anton and I had uh, this training done, so we will do this part of our scientific work. Then we have uh, 35 experiments as part of Expedition 30 and 70-something uh, as part of Expedition 31. There is something new, there is something that I uh, did before when I was a member of my previous expedition, but everything is quite interesting and exciting. Thank you. We have a lot of experiments, European, Japanese, Canadian, US, of course, 
These are medical experiments, uh, experiments uh, in the field of physics, different types of experiments. European experiments. And this is our future. Because I would like to do what we can and uh, see how it all goes. And everything will go as planned. Of course, that's difficult to perform experiments on board the station. But this is something we were trained to do, and uh, we'll do this. And uh, we'll have it the way we want it. So many experiments on space station. Choosing your favorite is like taking a chocolate from a box, trying to figure out which one is your favorite. Uh, let me talk about my favorite Russian experiment. It happens to be plasma crystal. This is an experiment that uses macroscopic scale dynamics, things that happen on a millimeter length scale in a weightless environment to help uh, show what goes on on the molecular scale in a plasma. It's a fascinating experiment, and I look forward to seeing it again on Space Station. There's another experiment that I really like. I just learned about it a few days ago. It's called Uragon. And this experiment has a spectrometer that looks at spectra from Earth at the same time it takes uh, an actual two-dimensional picture. And it shows wavelengths from the ultraviolet into the mid-range infrared. Another fascinating piece of equipment. On behalf of ESA, with a question for Andre, if you could answer in both English and Dutch. Uh, just seven months after Paolo Nespoli returned to Earth, Europe returns a presence to the International Space Station. What is the importance of this increment for Europe and for your native Netherlands? Translate the question. I can ask you to uh, ask the questions in English more slower, slower, because slower. So the problem is that so now, after Paolo Nespoli, who was in the so now after Paolo Nespoli, we flew in the spring summer time frame. We have uh, our next European crew on board the station. And you asked why this is important for the European Space Agency. Uh, it's, uh, I'm very pleased that ESA, who is a small partner in the International uh, Space Station uh, uh, group, as you can say, it, uh, uh, has more or less one long duration flight every year. <laughs> okay, you know what? Uh, and um, uh, I'm glad I, I could <laughs> fill in the, uh, the slot for, uh, for this year. Uh, it's an ongoing program that we have, of course, with a lot of experiments uh, that are uh, waiting to be performed on board. Uh, and I'm very pleased that, uh, that we, as a, a small partner from, uh, the, for the International Space Station, uh, can participate uh, on this level. It's a fantastic scientific effort. For, uh, yeah, it is very important that the Netherlands, as a small part of the ESA, and ESA is a very small part of the international space station, of the cooperation between America, Russia, Canada, Japan and Europe, that we have the opportunity to send them every year as European astronauts to the sky and to make a part of this fantastic uh, ja, technologisch project uh, wat ze met zeg maar het hele noordelijke half rond hebben. En ik ben blij dat ik deel uit kan maken van, uh, van, van deze bemanning. Uh, en uh, voor, uh, zeg maar voor dit jaar, een half jaar, uh, mijn, uh, mijn wetenschappelijke en technische werk kan doen aan boord van het ruimstation.
Yeah, a, a question for Don Pettit for NASA TV. Um, what are your thoughts on returning to the space station for the third time and at a time when you can make significant scientific contributions to the research on board? Yeah. Uh, scientific advancements are such that to make significant steps takes long periods of time with the work of any individual being a small part that's added to the work of many others. So as such, uh, what we do on Space Station, this mission, we will know what the outcome is maybe in five years. In terms of familiarity with the third time going back to Space Station, it's uh, sort of like going on the, the third date with your, the woman that becomes your wife. There's certain things that are familiar, but then there's a whole lot that's still unknown. <laughs> One more question, please. You've been working together for quite a long time, so I think you know each other well enough, and now we are going to spend a significant amount of time in space. What uh, can you say about uh, each other? What qualities, what uh, traits of character can uh, help you to perform this work successfully during such a long amount of time? Yes, I've been training for approximately two years, and we really know each other very well. And I'd like to say that uh, both my crewmates are very experienced and uh, very professional people. They know a lot. It's always interesting with them. They're never dull. And uh, we always find uh, topics for discussion. So I'm really happy that I fly with them. I'm very glad, too, to be a member of this crew. The command is excellent. What is also important that we never blame each other. <laughs> so that's why it's, uh, we have always a comfortable environment to work in. And the Anton, as you also heard, is a, a very intelligent person as well. I might even say he's a genius. The way he's thinking, what is it? And I like the way he thinks. It is very interesting. And uh, frankly speaking, two months is a short period of time, but it will seem long. Oleg and Andre with one important word, and that's patience. They have patience that allows us to work together as a team, as a crew, to get the mission work done. More questions, please? Ever a few more questions. Andre is certified for the Soyuz vehicle, but this time you fly on the Soyuz of a new series. So I would like to ask you what feelings you have when preparing on this uh, for this new type of the vehicle. And uh, next, uh, your first experience on the Soyuz vehicle was uh, somewhat uh, challenging when I've been searching for you for several hours. And now you start training again on the Soyuz vehicle and a modernized uh, vehicle. And this is the day when uh, the future commander uh, had uh, two children of his born. I like the Soyuz, and I flew on the Soyuz uh, TMA-3 and TMA-4. And the uh, Soyuz TMA was very good. And uh, this new series, uh, 700 plus, it's uh, a significant step forward as well. It's better, new computers. So we are doing most of it. So, as we move forward, we try to do less. So, I think that TMAM may even be better in this respect. 
As the current vehicle is already modernized, it's uh, new, it's uh, progressive, and uh, I really enjoy flying on Soyuz's. Everything will be fine this time. Because I have an electron, an electronic talisman. <laughs> Questions, please. Prior to this press conference, I had uh, two exams. Were there any specific task, any specific task which were especially challenging, especially difficult, and how it all turned out? Well, traditionally we have two big exams, one simulating the usual day on board the station, and the second day is training on our Soyuz transport vehicle. It takes all day as well. So we simulate all the activities on board the Soyuz from launch to descent. And uh, as far as the day on the ISS, we can prepare for this in advance. So we look forward to whichever equipment replacements we're going to have, uh, how uh, this uh, day will turn out. But at the same time, it is also uh, filled with uh, off normal situations, and we don't know about them in advance. So these days were really packed. For on board the station that day, we had about five abnormal situations, left support system failures, or failures in some scientific equipment, failures of the equipment itself, of the station equipment, and we had a depressed case. Uh, the overall grade was excellent, no remarks. The second day was uh, training in our transport vehicle in the Soyuz. We performed uh, a maneuver, we docked, and then we made the descent and landed. And we had around six of nominal situations. Then communication problems, a failure in uh, service equipment when performing dynamic operations, and a fire case. And the overall grade was 4.8. <laughs> and what I can add is that this is exactly why we have uh, these exams, in order to create challenges and problems for the crew to overcome. And the main part of the preparation is preparation for off normal situations. So the main task for the crew is not only to deal with this off normal situation, but also to recognize that there is an off normal situation going on. And as you said at the beginning of the press conference, both crews went through these exams and will continue their preparation, the final stage at the Baikonur Cosmodrome. So why was it 4.8 and not 5.0? 4.8 because the Commission has a special list and each activity we do, everything we do is evaluated per this list. Uh, there was no major uh, no major impacts, it's just that we, uh, there were some comments regarding our actions that uh, evaluated the overall results. And I may add on my part that 4.8 is a really good grade. And again, I'd like to reiterate that uh, obstacles are created on purpose. So, this is the way it is done, and it's intentionally done that uh, 100% can virtually never be achieved. Otherwise, it would have been too easy. Well, I can cite an example. Say you work with a panel, you push a button. It's a, a wrong action, but it doesn't uh, bring about any consequence at all. So this may be a small minus on the list of our commission, and uh, uh, this is something that the commission can uh, comment on afterwards. A question for Oleg. I know that you are going to take a musical instrument from Yakutia on board to the station. Will this be a souvenir for you or what? Well, you know, some time ago, an official delegation from Yakutia came to us and they wanted to have an instrument, a musical instrument, uh, which uh, was up on the station. Uh, be present at their Museum of Space Flight. 
and uh, the museum will have uh, its anniversary of the coming year. So we, they wanted me to take this instrument on board the station. It's uh, rather huge. It's uh, 90 grams. And uh, I took it as uh, one of my personal items. And uh, I was also given certain lessons as to how to play it. And uh, I'll see how it goes. Yakutia Yik is uh, one of the nationalities making up Russia, so why not? Question for Sergei Krikalov. Now we're going to go into have uh, six people on board the station. How would you evaluate the work of cosmonauts uh, during this past year? How this past year in general worked out for you? Well, if you want me to deviate from uh, this uh, impending flight and uh, the current crew, I can say that yes, indeed, in the middle of the year we had certain events that uh, made uh, changes in the flight program. The launch was uh, delayed till November, and this was done uh, intentionally so that we make sure that uh, the flight will be safe and will be reliable. And once again, the system showed that it was fully reliable and that despite the change in the flight program, all the tasks were completed uh, uh, very well. And Sergei Volkov had to end all his tasks alone on board the station. But thanks to the resource that the system has, Everything continued nominally, and uh, now that uh, this crew launches, we go back to our usual timeline with six crew members present on board. So yes, the system, the overall system, experienced additional workloads to make sure that everything is safe from the point of view of uh, piloted space flights. And, uh, now we have uh, flights that take place more frequently. Now we have uh, four launches per year. And uh, this time we had uh, them really packed together. And again, the system holds, and this shows it has internal resources. So despite all the fluctuations, it is still operating, and everything seems to be working well. What system do you mean? I mean the the overall system of uh, space flights, of uh, preparation of people, of uh, equipment. It's much more than uh, just one vehicle or one crew. It's uh, the overall functioning, the the overall operation of uh, the ISS concept. It's not only the Russian part. It's also the international part because each change makes. Uh, uh, impact on uh, all the other participants, international participants, etc. And the experience shows that whichever was necessary to be done, everything was done by all the partners. And uh, now, as uh, the overall system, we go back to the previous level. Who is going to see you off at the Cosmodrome? I will. <laughs> yes, friends and family, and of course my colleagues from the European Space Agency, from ESA. And of course the instructors and other specialists from GCDC and Roscosmos. Family and colleagues. <laughs> Oleg, what about you? It's still being discussed. Thank you. We'll see. Thank you. More questions, please. At the end, I would like to let you know about the subsequent plans of our crew. Uh, today, we're going to visit uh, Gagarin's room, uh, the Kremlin. Uh, we'll uh, lay flowers for Gagarin and uh, Korolev tombs. Then we'll also visit the uh, 
a museum of uh, uh, Sergei Korolev, and uh, this program is uh, over for today's day. Next, we'll fly out to the Baikonur Cosmodrome and we'll continue the preparation at Baikonur. And uh, the launch is scheduled for December 22nd. Let's uh, thank the crew.
Yeah, it's beautiful. It takes a really nice net night because it's all lit up and everything. Yeah. Hey, Joe. I don't Stay, uh, uh, yeah, right there. Right there? Uh, yeah. Okay, see, with, with St. Basil's in the background. Ah, oh, Chris CV. Cool. Yeah, it didn't turn out very well. Good. Just, your mouth was open. It was so funny. You're too much. Uh, it is cool. It's really a privilege to be able to be able to come here and see things from this angle. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I don't think I've ever stood up there. No, I mean, yeah, I mean, this is this is this is just a really unusual angle to be able to see things. Windy, like really recent. Six months. Six months. Yeah. Well, I've decided you either. Launch in a snowstorm or come home in a snowstorm. Oh, at least the Isha. <laughs> it's so big in there. Thank you. 
<laughs> oh, look at that. At least. Can you tell us in English and Dutch about the, the ceremony that's going on here today? Uh, yeah, it's one of the traditions uh, after the uh, after the exams and after the committee that we go uh, to the to the Kremlin Wall. The most important part is that that you put flowers uh, with uh, with uh, the graves of uh, those cosmonauts that uh, gave their lives. Um, uh, Kamarov, and, uh, Soyuz 1, and uh, Soyuz 11, uh, Volkov, Pachayev, and Dobrovolsky, uh, and also uh, Gagarin uh, and Korolev are there. And that's, that's the most important, uh, important part. And then there are part of traditions that you go to the, the compounds of the Kremlin uh, uh, and yeah, watch uh, the, the, the famous cannon and the big bell. Uh, that's more yeah, a nice tradition. It has nothing to do with space flight. Uh, but especially the Kremlin wall, the flowers are very important, and I feel that uh, uh, feel that as well. Yeah, now the examens and uh, na zeg maar de commissie waarbij we goed gekeurd zijn voor uh, voor de ruimtevlucht, dan is het traditie om naar uh, uh, zeg maar de, de Kremlin te gaan. I do it again. Um, na de examens en na de commissie is het traditie om, uh, om naar de Kremlin te gaan en dan bloemen te leggen bij de graven van uh, cosmonauten die hun uh, leven gegeven hebben voor, uh, ja, voor de ruimtevaart. Uh, dat zijn de manningsleden van, uh, van uh, Soyuz 1, Kamarov, Soyuz 11, uh, Bachayev, Dobrovolsky en Volkov uh, en ook bij het graf van Gagarin en Koroyov. Zeg maar het grote brein achter de ruimtevaart. En dat, uh, ja, dat voel ik ook altijd als een bijzonder moment. Uh, en daarna gaan we altijd nog even zeg maar, naar het, het terrein van het Kremlin op. Uh, bij de uh, beroemde kanon en de bel. Dit zijn traditie uh, dingen die hebben niet zoveel met ruimtevaart uh, te maken. Uh, maar ja, het is, uh, vooral de Kremlin muur is een belangrijk moment. Well, if you are an explorer, being gone for family holidays is just something that comes with the territory. And uh, I've been gone for a number of Christmases now uh, in Antarctica. The exploration season is in the southern hemisphere winter time, which is right through. Thanksgiving and Christmas and New Year's, and if you want to, to be an explorer in that part of the territory, you're, by definition, you're going to be gone. Um, this will be the second time I've spent uh, a Christmas and a New Year's and uh, a Thanksgiving uh, on space station, and and so it's it's just something that comes with the territory of, of exploring.